Good morning. It is Friday, June 5th of 2020, and today I will be reading chapters 8 and 9 of The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. And um, we so far have met the family. We have learned about Willy Wonka. We have learned that Willy Wonka has um, provided five golden tickets for children to find in candy bars, and those five children will get a tour of the factory. So far, two of them have been found, one by a, man, a young man by the name of Gustus Gloop and a young lady by the name of Ruth Salt. And so today, uh, we'll be reading chapter eight and nine. Um, Charlie has tried to find a ticket, but was unsuccessful in his candy bar for his birthday. And, um, oh well. Uh, so chapter eight is called Two More Golden Tickets Found. That evening, Mr. Bucket's newspaper announced the finding of not only the third golden ticket, but the fourth as well. Two golden tickets found today, screamed the headlines. Only one more left. All right, said Grandpa Joe when the whole family was gathered in the old rooms after supper, old people's room after supper. Let's hear who found them. The third ticket, read Mr. Bucket, holding the newspaper up close to his face because his eyes were bad and he couldn't afford glasses. The third ticket was found by Miss Violet Beauregard. There was great excitement in the Beauregard household when our reporter arrived to interview the lucky young lady. Cameras were clicking and flash holes were flashing and people were pushing and jostling and trying to get a bit closer to the famous girl. And the famous girl was standing on a chair in the living room waving the golden ticket madly at arm's length as though she were flagging a taxi. She was talking very fast and very loudly to everyone, but it was not easy to hear all that she said because she was chewing so ferociously upon a piece of gum at the same time. There's Violet standing up and waving her ticket amongst the reporters. I'm a gum chewer normally, she shouted, but when I heard about these ticket things of Mr. Wonka's, I laid off the gum and switched to candy bars in hope of striking lucky. Now, of course, I'm right back on gum. I just adore gum. I can't do without it. I munch it all day long except for a few minutes at mealtimes when I take it out and stick it behind my ear for safekeeping. To tell you the honest truth, I simply wouldn't feel comfortable if I didn't have a little wedge of gum to chew on every moment of the day. I really wouldn't. My mother says it's not ladylike and it looks ugly to see a girl's jaws going up and down like mine do all the time. But I don't agree. And who's she to criticize anyway? Because if you ask me, I'd say her jaws are going up and down almost as much as mine are just from yelling at me every minute of the day. Now, Violet, Miss Bogart said from a far corner of the room where she was standing on the piano to avoid being trampled by the mob. All right, mother, keep your hair on, Miss Bogart shouted. And now, she went on turning to the reporters again. It may interest you to know that this piece of gum I'm chewing right at this moment is the one I've been working on for over three months solid. That's a record, that is. It's beaten the record held by my best friend, Miss Cornelia Prinz Medal. And she was mad. It's a, my most treasured possession now, this piece of gum is. At nights, I just stick it on the end of the bedpost, and it is as good as ever in the mornings. A bit hard at first, maybe, but soon softens up again after I've given it a few good chews. Before I start chewing for the world, record, I used to change my piece of gum once a day. I used to do it in our ele elevator on the way home from school. Why the elevator? Because I like sticking the gooey piece that I just finished with onto one of the elevator buttons. And the next person who came along and pressed a button got my old gum on the end of his or her finger. Ha ha, and what a racket they kicked up, some of them. You get the best results with women who have expensive gloves on. Oh yes, I'm thrilled to be going to Mr. Wonka's factory, and I understand that afterwards he's going to give me enough gum to last for the rest of my whole life. Whoopee, hooray. Beastly girl, said Grandma Josephine. Despicable, said Grandma Georgina. She'll come to a sticky end one day, chewing all that gum. You see, she doesn't. And who got the fourth ticket, Daddy? Charlie asked. Now let me see, said Mr. Bucket, peering at the newspaper again. Ah, yes, here we are. The fourth golden ticket, he read, was found by a boy called Mike TV. Another bad lot, I'll be bound, muttered Grandma Josephine. Don't interrupt, Grandma, said Miss Bucket. The TV household, said Mr. Bucket, going on with his reading, was crammed like all the others with excited visitors when a reporter arrived. But young Mike TV, the lucky winner, seemed extremely annoyed by the whole business. Can't you fools see I'm watching television, he said angrily. I wish you wouldn't interrupt. The nine-year-old boy was seated before an enormous television set with his eyes glued to the screen. He was watching a film in which one bunch of gangsters was shooting up another bunch of gangsters with machine guns. Mike TV himself had no less than eight to 18 toy pistols of various sizes hanging from belts around his body. Now, every now and again, he would leap up into the air and fire off half a dozen rounds from one or 
or another of these weapons. Quiet, he shouted when someone tried to ask him a question. Didn't I tell you not to interrupt? This show's an absolute whiz banger. It's terrific. I watch it every day. I watch all of them every day, even the crummy ones when they're, where there's no shooting. I like the gangsters the best. So there he is watching his TV with all his 18 guns um, around him. They're terrific, these gangsters, especially when they start pumping each other full of lead or flashing the old stilettos or giving each other the one, two, three with these, their knuckle butt dusters. Oh boy, my, what wouldn't I give to be doing that myself? It's the life, I tell you, it's terrific. That's quite enough, snapped Grandma Josephine. I can't bear to listen to it. Nor me, said Grandma Georgina. Do all children behave like this nowadays, like these brats we've been hearing about? Of course not, said Mr. Bucket, smiling the old lady in the bed. Some do, of course. In fact, quite a lot of them do, but not all. And now there's only one ticket left, said Grandpa George. Quite so, sniffed Grandma Georgina. And now, just as sure as I'll be having cabbage soup for supper tomorrow, that ticket will go to some nasty little beast who doesn't deserve it. In chapter nine, Grandpa takes a gamble. The next day, when Charlie came home from school and went in to see his grandparents, he found that only Grandpa Joe was awake. The other three were all snoring loudly. Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe. And he beckoned Charlie to come closer. Charlie tiptoed over and stood beside the bed. The old man gave Charlie a sly grin, and then he started rummaging under his pillow with one hand, and when the hand came out again, there was an ancient peat leather purse clutched in the fingers. Under cover of the bedclothes, the old man opened the purse and tipped it upside down. Out fell a single silver 10 cent piece. It's my secret hoard, he whispered. The others don't know I've got it. And now you and I are going to have one more fling at finding this last ticket. How about it, eh? But you'll have to help me. Are you sure you want to spend your money on that, with Grandpa? Charlie whispered. Of course I'm sure, spluttered the old man excitedly. Don't stand there arguing. I'm just as crazy as you are to find that ticket. Here, take the money and run down the street to the nearest store and buy the first Wonka candy bar you see and bring it straight back to me. And we'll open it together. Charlie took the silver little silver coin and slipped quickly out of the room. In five minutes, he was back. Have you got it? Whispered Grandpa Joe, his eyes shining with excitement. Charlie nodded and held out the candy bar. Wonka's nut crunch surprise, it said on the wrapper. Good, the old man whispered, sitting on the bed and rubbing his hands. Now, come over here and sit close to me and we'll open it together. Are you ready? Yes, Charlie said. I'm ready. All right, you tear off the first bit. No, so Charlie said. You paid for it. You do it all. The old man's fingers were trembling most terribly as they fumbled with the candy bar. We don't have a hope, really, he whispered, giggling a bit. You do know we ha don't have a hope, don't you? Yes, Charlie said. I know that. They looked at each other and both started giggling nervously. Mind you, said Grandpa Joe, there's just a tiny chance that it might be the one, don't you agree? Yes, Charlie said, of course. Why don't you open it, Grandpa? All in good time, my boy, all in good time. Which end do you think I ought to open first? That corner, the furthest one from you. Just tear off a tiny bit, but not quite enough for us to see anything. Like that, said the old man? Yes, no, a little bit more. You finish it, said Grandpa Joe. I'm too nervous. No, Grandpa, you must do it yourself. Very well, then, here goes. He tore off the wrapper. They both stared at what lay underneath. It was a bar of candy, nothing more. All at once, they both saw the funny side of the whole thing. They burst into peals of laughter. laughter. What the heck's going on? cried Grandma Josephine, waking up suddenly. Nothing, said Grandpa Joe. You go on back to sleep. So that is the end of chapter nine. For those of you who are participating in my class and are doing the notes, I will bring them up. We'll review them here. So our name today is the 5th of June of the year 2020. We read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, chapters eight and nine. And we first learned that Ballot Beauregard found the first gold, uh, third uh, golden ticket. And then we learned that Mike TV has found the fourth golden ticket, which means there's only one left. So Grandpa Joe has sent Charlie out to buy a chocolate bar with a secret stash of money he's been holding on to. And they take and open it slowly, but they still don't find a ticket. So at this point, there's four tickets found and still one more to be found by somebody. We thank you for listening today and look forward to um, visiting with you again next week as we will begin on Monday to read chapters 10 and 11.